Angela Fazio is an industry powerhouse who has overseen 40,000 homes sold and 9 billion in production. And Kristen Cantrell is one of the nation's most accomplished team leaders, helping thousands of agents build their businesses. They are passionate about educating, encouraging, and empowering moms in real estate. Our next episode starts now. Hey guys, it's Kristen Cantrell. Welcome to Moms in Real Estate. I'm Angela Fazio, and today's guest is from Lucky, Louisiana, but lives in uh, California. And her name is Jocelyn Pennywell. And she's going to be talking to us. Our topic is on building an empire for your family. So Jocelyn, go ahead and get us started and tell us a little bit about yourself. Yes. Hello. Hi, everybody. Um, you know, y'all gave such an amazing introduction. Let's see how I can add to that. Um, I'm Jocelyn Pennywell Trim, actually, but most people know me by Jocelyn Pennywell. Um, we, I got married, and actually, you guys can watch my wedding on um, probably Hulu. It was on My Great Big Lifetime Wedding with David <gasps> Tatera. So was he? So was another one of our guests, That's Nicole crazy. Wilhelm. Yeah. That's so really? cool. He's from California yes. as well. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yes. We have to connect you guys. So it's so funny. I have a picture of our wedding right behind me. Um, it was beautiful. Yes. Um, most people know me from America's Next Top Model. So that's the reason why I stick with the Jocelyn Pennywell, because that's how a lot of people know me. Um, and I was like, hey, I might as well just add trim to the end. So it's Jocelyn Pennywell trim forever, even if I do get plump. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there was a day. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I love that. Yeah, I'm just, I'm a Southern belle that moved to um, sunny Southern California. And um, I ended up getting into real estate a few years ago. I have a two and a half year old and an eight month old. So it can get quite hectic over here, yes. but it's so exciting. Yeah. Oh, it's a blessing. I, I love that. And I've been where you're at. I'm like just a little bit ahead of you as far as the age, age but mm -hmm. oh man. And I'm way ahead of you because my grandchildren are that age. <laughs> <laughs> but it's such a, it's such a good age. I love, I love both of those ages. Okay, wait, let's go back. How did your wedding get on Hulu? Yeah. So basically it was on Lifetime it it originally aired on Lifetime, but now they put it on um, Hulu and you can find it online. But um, to make a long story short, me and my husband do a lot of nonprofit um, work in the community, giving back. We have a nonprofit organization called Dream Chaser International Foundation that my husband started um, years ago playing basketball. And it's where we, you know, mentor and work with youth and um, give scholarships and things like that. So um, because of our um, our efforts and our hard work towards giving back to the community, we were awarded a wedding. <laughs> nice. That's that so cool. Yeah, that's a nice amazing. award. That's a awesome award. I definitely yeah, want to go, too. I want to go check it out. And then I, I have to go look at your America's uh, next top model. How cool is that? Yeah. I know, right? Girl, we have a famous I, person on our I podcast. Know, I know. You're our first famous person, I think. I think you're our <laughs> first. I, I, I don't have any words. <laughs> Not famous yet. I'm still working on it. Maybe my maybe my kiddos will do their thing. Because they're I'm famous in my eyes. Working. They're already building up their little savings in bank accounts. So I'm like, come on, let's let's get some work done. We're in California. Why not? <laughs> yeah, that's true. I have a friend from Vegas, a really good friend of mine, and she brings her. She literally goes over to LA weekly with her kids because they do everything. They model. Mm -hmm. They act. They dance. Everything. Yeah. That's, so tell us a little bit, tell us a little bit about your real estate journey. Cause you are, you've only been in real estate just before your oldest was born, right? Correct. Um, I ended up getting my real estate license right before she was born in, in 2019. Um, so it has been an amazing journey since then. When I got pregnant, I said, you know what? I should go ahead and get into real estate because it will give me the flexibility to be able to, um, you know, take care of my family and, you know, work. And I love helping people and, you know, helping someone find their dream home and putting them into, you know, their own property that they own. That's like icing on the cake. So I was like, let me, you know, get into this. So, you know, I took my test, got my license. 
Um, and because I already have my bachelor's in business management and my master's in criminal justice. So I already have been to school. So I only had to take like two classes um, in real estate. So it was really quick. Um, and it has been amazing ever since. I have a lot of amazing clients, um, mothers, you know, with kids, you know, and they, we can relate with each other. We get to, now we're all going to each other's parties and, and things like that. So I love the network that I've gained even by, you know, being able to um, experience this new chapter of my life of being a mother. Cause it's like, it's so many things in this new chapter. I'm married. Cause you know, Maya, my two-year-old was our honeymoon baby, you know? Oh, so wow. we, I, we <laughs> Yeah, we got you. Big, yeah, you have a lot of like the same year. You have a lot of big things that have happened over right the now. last. Yeah, yeah, that is for exactly. sure. And I love, I love your journey because it's it's so relatable for so many people that listen to our podcast because so many moms get into real estate for the exact same reason that you did is for that freedom and flexibility while you're parenting. Mm -hmm. Right. And so what you, you've built is a commute, like you intentionally go and build relationships and you end up attracting other people that are like you, other moms, and who makes the decisions in the household for the most part, Honestly. it's the moms, right? Um, but I, yeah. I definitely think that your story is one that most of the people thinking about getting into real estate or have like your same story that listen on our podcast. Yep. Yesterday I was speaking with a, a woman who feels so isolated because she feels like there's no one around her mm -hmm. that understands what it's like to have to be a mom have kids, be a great wife. I'm like, oh, you have, where have you been? You need to listen to our podcast. Because mm -hmm. people like you who are strong so women with mm -hmm. amazing backgrounds getting into real estate. And mamas, it's hard. I know. But mm -hmm. <laughs> we all know. And I, that's what I love about your podcast is that it's not only about, because, you know, women, we're bosses. And you're, you know, we have to do so much. We have to take care of the house. You know, we take care of our husbands, our spouses. We take care of even the dogs. So we right. have a lot on our Those dogs. You know? So, yeah, but but you're not. And that's the beautiful part is to to discover that you're not alone and that there are other mothers that you can sit down and you can talk to and you can hear their story. And y'all together can get through anything. Right. Yeah. I mean, so many women um, in our industry will say, well, when I go out of town, like my phone rings and that's when all the deals come and I have nobody. And I'm like, what do you mean you have nobody? Nobody can help you while you're out of town. We're like everywhere. <laughs> there's literally so many moms in our industry yeah. that if you focused on your agent to agent relationships, you should have mm -hmm. such a great community of people mm -hmm. willing to help you no matter if it's vacation or you have, you know, a soccer game and you can't go show, there should be just tons of people. So yes, um, I, I want to talk about some of the struggles that you have talked to us about. Um, and one in particular is breastfeeding. I feel like we don't talk about that a lot. That's hard. It's so, it was that actually for me so harder hard. than birth. So go oh, ahead and tell girl. us your story. We're on the same page. I, mm -hmm. I tell mothers all the time, especially when they're getting ready to like, they're about to have their first baby, I let them know breastfeeding is the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my entire life. And mm -hmm. you guys, I mean that with my, with my son, it's been a lot easier. So with number two, life is a little different. A lot easier. But number one, oh my Lord. I was <laughs> Let's talk in, about I that. I had hepatitis. I had, oh, yep. um, Y'all, I was in misery. I didn't even know you can have yeast in your breast. Yes, but I had it. And I would sit there like I would literally my my baby would be on be would I would be nursing her, and I'm like, oh my god, please hurry up because that's how much pain I was in. Oh yeah, I couldn't. I would sit mm -hmm. up and like hold like I'm in like I'm cringing the whole time because every gulp she takes i'm feeling sharp pains go through my brain. i can like oh feel it i know right now i, I listen the, my first oh. son is in his 20s now and i can still remember me saying this oh. gentle with the baby's head <laughs> gentle with the baby's head it's, it's, it's it hurts so, so bad it hurts so it bad hurts. Uh -huh. yeah it's, uh -huh. it's because, and it's so funny because my mom used to tell me she was like take rough stuff and you know, and get your nipples ready and, you know, and you have yeah. to start manipulating them and all. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, 
it's not enough. You gotta start I pain. was like, I was putting <laughs> coconut oil on my nipples, not like <laughs> SOS pads. <laughs> no, you should have used SOS pads. Girl, I should have. No, 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 don't use SOS pads, mommy. Don't, don't use SOS pads. <laughs> terrible yeah, advice. Yeah. But, but oh my God, y'all. My mom used to be like, you better be over there pulling on them. Pull on them and, and do yeah. all this. Like, no, I was not ready. I was not ready. That's a Southern mama for you. Like, yeah, put some of this and do some of this. And I'm like, y'all, I wasn't ready. I was not ready. So let's get back to the encouraging part, because once you get through that excruciating first part, it is so worth it. It is so worth it. And y'all, I nursed for 13 months. So Mm -hmm. it was time, once I discovered, now I went to quite a few lactation consultants, but once I figured it out, Mm -hmm. oh my God, it was amazing. Yeah, then it's easy. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it became so easy. So with my son, I don't have the mastitis problems. I don't have pain problems. If I feel like I'm getting a little yeast in my breast, I just take something, you know, to help control the yeast. Um, plus, I found, you know, um, probiotics that are amazing that help with that because I have bad yeast problem. It's terrible. Um, so I have to take probiotics and stuff like that. But I never knew that until... I had my first baby. I was literally, I had a doula, which I never even knew what that was before. And yeah. I, and I literally was in a breastfeeding support group at first. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm not Me kidding too. at all. It was so hard. Me too. Oh, I did the same I thing. I, grew, um, I had a doula, my second baby, but because I didn't do natural, she wasn't there at the actual birth. Um, mm-hmm. But she kind of guided me through a lot of stuff, a lot of um, it, like stretches and things to do to help ease pain while pregnant, you know, because once you get up there to that, to the, to the end and you're about to give birth, it, it can get tough. You can hardly get sleep, finding positions, you know, so that yoga ball. Woo, <laughs> I love that yoga ball. I love the big body pillow. Oh my gosh. Oh, me too. <laughs> okay, wait, let's. My body let's... Pillow. Let's go from the breastfeeding struggle to the lead generation struggle. (laughs) Tell us, because that's another thing that you, you had mentioned is, you know, something else that's really hard for, for a lot of people is figuring out where are, what lead gen buckets am I going to focus on? So tell us about like how that was a struggle for you and how have you overcome that? And like, where are you spending time getting leads? I already have the tagline for this podcast. (laughs) It's breastfeeding and lead gen. They're both hard. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Oh, yes, they are. Yes, they are. You know, we can do hard things. Lead generating is still challenging at times for me, but at the same time, it's your network. And I do, me and my husband do a lot of things, especially my husband. He's really good with people. Um, so we have um, we have a company called LA Line, where we um, bring people together. So it's a social networking company. So we utilize that to help Heck us yeah. to network our real estate business, um, as well as our nonprofit Dream Chaser. We u- utilize that as well to let people know, hey, we're in real estate. Um, so it's us taking advantage of our network because at the end of the day. I'm not a cold caller. Like I don't have time to sit down and cold no call. Um, everybody. I don't I like the people that come from cold calling. <laughs> no, I don't either. Hold on. Cause my husband's in the background now. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know what I love? I love, I want everyone to understand this is uh, uh-huh. what's really cool is you've positioned yourself to, you've created a room where <laughs> there's multiple things that you can say yes to. Right. So you can exactly. have, um, and, and I love that because I think sometimes we're so, we're just like, where's the next deal coming yeah, from? And we're very mm-hmm. transactional. Whereas you have multiple things, which is the beauty of what we do is to be able to say, how cool is it that I can say yes to this, this, and this? And you have multiple income streams from those things. Like always exactly. think that way. Do not think transactionally. It drives me nuts when I meet people that yep. do. No. So cold. I mean, it's, it's good to perfect something, but at the same time, like, you in this industry, you have to be good at multiple things and you have mm-hmm. to not only be a therapist, you know, a, a can- <laughs> excuse me, a counselor, but you also you have to be a friend. You have to be relatable and you have to also know the power of networking. Um, and that's want- that's where the power yeah. is. 
I want our audience to notice what she does because Jocelyn, mm -hmm. you're you're doing the things that you care about mm -hmm. and that you love. And exactly. through those forums, that's where you're meeting your meaningful clients, mm -hmm. right? I think exactly. people, they get caught in their head. I don't know why you don't just go discover what you love and, and what lights you up and then meet people who love that too. Your life exactly. is so much better. You're just intentional with your events. really. Yeah, we do events at least once a month and they're big yes. events that bring out a lot of people, even celebrities. So if you all can, you know, go check out l.a.line on Instagram and y'all can see, you know, we have parties right now for summer. It's been pool parties. But at the end of the day, it's all about us networking as well. So nice. let, let's go into some actual like give us some tips through what you're doing. Like how how do people know you're a real estate agent in those environments? I tell them. I walk them. <laughs> you ain't a no, secret I, agent. I, I, use, I use this thing called voice. <laughs> so I make sure that I, you know, I share because, and I do it organically, you know, but in mm -hmm. LA, you guys, people come up to you and ask you, what do you do before they ask your name? Out here, everyone want to know <laughs> how you can benefit them. So it's not hard for you to bring up that conversation in LA. But in other cities, you know, you want to do it organically. You know, you don't want to walk up to somebody and push real estate on them like a salesperson. No, that's not at all what I do. But I definitely, if I'm in a conversation with someone, at some point I'll throw in, yeah, because I'm a realtor, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. It, it cracks me up that people think that they don't have to say it and people are just going to know, like they're just going to look no. at you. Or, like, or people that are embarrassed. They're like, I don't want to come off salesy. I'm like, listen, like be proud of what you do. Exactly. exactly. And your if anybody gets weird about it, that's on them. Mm -hmm. Your insecurities can ruin your business. And that is exactly what it is. If you're a realtor, you're a business within yourself. So you have to speak up about your business. I mean, if you, I mean, and it's for anybody, if you, if you're selling something, you have to tell people what it is. I, I, it's not saying, Hey, Hey, bye, bye, bye. You know, making, trying to make them buy, but it's just making them aware that this is what I do. So if you ever need my services, I'm here. Exactly. Is there anything else that you do during these monthly events that gets you in connection with them outside of the event? So like, for example, whenever I do an event, my goal is to have connections with people and say, Hey, why don't we get together sometime? I'd love to learn more about you. And then my follow-up mm -hmm. is always like, Hey, I know we talked about getting coffee. Like does next week work for you? Do you do stuff like that so that you further the relationships from your small conversations at these events? Yes. It, and it definitely depends on the person. Um, like in most cases, because me and my husband work together, um, if it's couples, then we'll say, hey, let's do stuff together as couples. You know, you want to appeal to um, whoever the person is. Yeah. I, you also meet at our parties. We meet a lot of single um, ladies and single guys. So in those senses, they're not trying to really do coupley things, you know. So it's like, yeah, if you want to do you know, go out for coffee, meet up for brunch. Um, brunch is always cute and fun. You can do that. Um, but other than that, social media is so amazing. You don't even, a lot of times you don't have to spend money just to go and, and build relationships with people. If you're present on social media and some people even love if you become like their follower and you're liking their stuff. It doesn't have to be as intense as go spend money. It can be liking somebody else's photos and, and saying, Hey, you look beautiful or something like that in their comments. It, right. it depends on the person. You have to fill every individual out and know what it is that fuels and, and energizes them to build a, a bond. Absolutely. You're so intuitive. I love that. That's, that's mm -hmm. why you're surrounding yourself with amazing people. Oh, uh, I tried to go. <laughs> so what advice would you give to an agent that loves that idea of creating those rooms like you have, um, creating something that they're passionate about and incorporating real estate into it? Like where, what if I didn't know where to get started? Like, what would you say I need to do? Well, to, if you're already licensed, um, if you're yeah. already a licensed realtor, I would say just start with the people that you already know. Um, mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you had to walk out of your home to meet people. So where did you go to meet, you know, some of your best friends? You know, mm -hmm. start there. Now, I've always been one that enjoys going to parties and gatherings where I can talk. 
I don't, I'm not big on club, you know, like the club mm -hmm. vibe. So I like going places <laughs> where it's music, you can dance, you can have a good time, but I can hear you. You know right. what I'm saying? I can see you. Um, so there's now, nothing worse than when you're like, huh? Huh? Yeah, what are you <laughs> oh, I can't. Yeah, no, it's that's terrible. So you just want to put yourself um, in environments where you can build relationships because your network is your asset. So you just have to keep that mindset. Yep. Your I network. Agree. And you know what? Asset. You know what I always tell people that are getting started with events is everything big starts small. I say that all the time oh, because it's so true. And it, it, sometimes you start off doing your monthly events and one person shows up. But and the next fine. time, three it. people do. Right. The next time, maybe five. So, but if you just try it and you're like, oh my gosh, I tried it two or three times and nobody came, then it's not going to be successful. But if you just stick with it and you keep providing value and you keep inviting people, it they grow. always grow. Mm -hmm. So That's stick true. with it. It's not going to happen overnight. That's true. That's LA Line, my, my, husband, my husband has been amazing with LA Line. And when it started, it there were just, like you said, a few people. And now mm -hmm. hundreds mm -hmm. of people That's come awesome. to each one of it. So it's I love growing. That tremendously and at the end of the day it's about persistence heck yeah that's right we uh i i'm launching on on monday it's called community builders and it's literally for women oh. just like you you need to come into it but it's for women that intentionally create spaces i want people that don't just say like oh there's nothing like that out there in my area well then go make go the make room yourself yeah, yeah if you want to build community go start the room so I'm going to have to tell you all about it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're in a smaller, if you're in a smaller city, because LA is so huge, but if you're in a smaller city, you can make a big difference doing things that you hear, you know, realtors doing in larger cities. You can go and do it on your scale in your city and, and do amazing things, you know? And it's so many opportunities out there that you can do that don't cost, you know, it's events you can put on. It may cost mm -hmm. you a little bit, but it's not going to cost you a ton. If you go mm -hmm. get the right venue and you, once again, network with business owners, you can go and partner with companies. You know, like mm -hmm. they're like, oh, we have this event space. Okay, well, how about I bring, you know, bring some people to your event space and in exchange, you know, you'll make money off of your bar or off your food or whatever it is, you know, and just right. partner with people. You have to start building, like you said, from something. The best part about making your own community is it's a community that you enjoy. Yeah. If you start it and you build it, then you know you're going to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go. Because it's all your people. And it, at the end of the day, those people are going to be the people that call you when it's time to buy a house or any real estate, period. That's right. That is right. Well, I've loved this topic. It's so up my alley. So I, I so appreciate you coming on and sharing with everybody that listens about your business and about your nipples. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you for being amazing. And if anybody else wants to go tug on their nipples because they're pregnant and about to have a baby, like you're gonna yeah, you're you gonna start. have to think of Jocelyn. <laughs> Jocelyn's start mom. manipulating, start manipulating. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. So so I good. love it. Well, thank you again, Jocelyn. It's been a pleasure. Anytime. Anytime. Thank you, ladies.